Hey guys, welcome to Historathon vlog. So I wasn't able to start until Historathon week two because life is crazy in my household at the beginning of February. So life was just a little bit chaotic, but we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. So anyway, I thought I would check in with you guys at the beginning of this vlog and let you know kind of where I'm at, what I'm reading, what I've gotten to so far, all of that jazz. So, so far, um, today is February 10th and so far I finished one book for Historathon. Um, and that is Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. Um, I really, really liked it. I gave it four stars. It wasn't quite five star material, but it was real close because I really, really liked it. So that was my singular finish so far. Um, that fulfilled the prompt of reading something about a topic I was unfamiliar with, which is the Pack Horse Library in Kentucky in the 1930s. And yeah, it was good. I really liked it. So currently I am in the middle of Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. Um, I am about a third of the way in. I'm liking it. Um, it's hard for me because it bounces around so much from perspective to perspective and the chapters are so short that it's just disjointed. And I know Salt to the Sea was like this too. And I don't know if it's because I listened to Salt to the Sea on audiobook and there were different narrators for every perspective. So I was able to kind of follow it. And this one I'm physically reading, but it's just hard to really get into the meat of the story. And so anyway, um, but I'm enjoying it so far. This is about the Spanish or after the Spanish Civil War in Madrid, Spain in the 1950s. Franco's in charge still and things are just not good. Um, I have had many times in this book so far, I'm only a third of the way in, that I have just been like, wait, what? Um, he did what? The girls were expected to do, huh? What? Like, it's just not okay. So anyway, it's been really intriguing. There are a lot of things that I'm very interested in, but I'm just not wanting to pick it up. It's not like I have to devour it right now good. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully we'll be able to read more of this tonight. Um, I am also currently in the middle of two non-historathon books, but I figured I'd share them with you anyway. The first is Anne of Avonlea. I'm listening to the audiobook of this, and um, I'm almost done with it. So I should be able to finish this tonight. But that's for my Anne along read-along that I'm hosting. And then I'm also reading Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. This is our Community Reads middle grade pick for the months of February and March. They do like a community reads and they try to get as many people in the community to read these books as possible. And then they're bringing Renee Watson into town to do a talk. So I'm having my third and fourth graders read this also. Um, I have daughters that are in third grade and fourth grade. So they're going, they are reading this as well. And we're just doing it slow. We're doing a chapter a day and they're really short chapters. There's 21 chapters. So um, we're making our way slowly through that, but I am currently reading that one as well and we'll probably finish it this month but anyway and then yeah so that's what I'm currently reading um hopefully we'll be able to finish Anne of Avonlea tonight so I can move on to a new audiobook if I can do that my next audiobook I think is going to be The Forgotten Seamstress by Liz Chanel um this is just a cover by that I don't really know anything about and I'm really interested in it and I really just want to read it so I know I already have it checked out on audio and I want to get that done so that is kind of what I have on my agenda for today. I will check in later with a reading update. We don't have a lot going on this week as far as family stuff and outings and all of that. Um, my daughter was home sick from school today, so we're not doing extracurriculars after school today. So that made that easy for me. I just have to make dinner and make sure my house doesn't completely fall apart. So laundry, that sort of thing, um, and dishes and sweeping and all the fun adult things that I really don't want to do because I'd rather be reading. But anyway, um, yeah, I will check in with you guys later. Hey guys, so it is now Thursday. Um, I have been able to finish up my other two books that I was working on. So the Some Places More Than Others and Anne of Avonlea are complete. As of this morning, they're done so I can move on to more Historathon reads, which I am excited about. Um, as far as Fountains of Silence, I have about 100 pages left. 
So I'm really close to being done with this. I'm loving it. It is now to the point where I'm into the story. I want to know how things are going to wrap up. There have been lots of twists and turns. Some of them I saw coming, some of them I didn't. But I want to know how it ends. So I'm going to sit now and finish this, hopefully here in the next hour or so. I'll knock that out. And then I am going to be starting some new books today. So my new audiobook, as I previously mentioned, will be The Forgotten Seamstress. I'm just really excited to get to this one. So this will be my new audiobook that I'm going to start when I am doing some housework today. Um, my new ebook I'm going to start is going to be Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. This is on my 20 books I want to read in 2020 list. And it's on my winter TBR. I just need to read it. I'm supposed to be buddy reading it with Leslie Ring. And I haven't started yet. And it is February 12th, 13th. It is February 13th. So um, anyway, I'm going to start this on ebook. And eventually I may switch to another format. But I try to have a physical book, an audio book, and an ebook going at all times. And I just finished up my ebook that I was reading. So I need something to fill that slot. And then my next physical book I will pick up when I'm done with Fountains of Silence is This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. And this is another one that I just am really excited about. So um, I will let you know what I think of Fountains of Silence when I get done with it. I'm going to sit and read it now and then get on with things. And I will touch base with you guys in a little bit. Right, and just like that I'm done so I think I landed on four stars for this there were th some things at the end that I just I don't know I had issue with there is a big time jump from like the first three quarters of the book and then there's a big time like an 18 year time jump at the end and I didn't like that it just I think it split the story up too much and it was too distracting from all the storylines. Um, most of the twists in here I figured out before they happened. And yeah, I loved learning about Spain and learning about the Spanish Civil War and Franco's dictatorship and all of that though. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and I'm really glad I read this. So I'm super curious to see what everybody else is going to think about this. I can't wait to have our um, Discord discussion on the 29th. So yeah, now on to this tender land. So I'll probably start that later. Um, for now, I think I'm going to go down and make my kids some lunch. I have two kids home from school today. One's sick and one has a muscle spasm in her neck and can't move. So two kids home from school and the toddler. So I need to go make lunch and yeah, then I'm probably going to get some housework done and listen to the Forgotten Seamstress while I'm doing that. So I will check in with you guys later. Hey guys, so it is now Saturday, February 15th. I haven't gotten a lot accomplished. Um, I just got done recording and editing and uploading a video for my channel for um, an arc of the side like trilogy review and discussion and then I went to do the closed captionings on it and I realized that none of it makes any sense and it's all ridiculous and I want to refilm it so I need to do that. Um, unfortunately it is now Saturday and unlike most people on booktube the weekends are my least productive time because all of my kids are home. So during the week, three of the four kids are in school and I can use that time when my youngest is napping to film. So I'm going to have to wait until Monday. So there's not going to be anything going up on my channel for a while, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So since I'm really frustrated right now because of that and the time that I put into it that is now wasted, 
I'm going to take a break and I'm going to take a reading break. So the first thing that I'm going to work on is I have my reading journal here and I am going to work on updating it because I haven't updated like this month stuff in a while, writing down things in it. And then um, I am going to work on reading Redeeming Love. So I was going to start this Tender Land, but I decided I'm just going to read Redeeming Love. So I am going to work on reading this for until my husband gets home. He's at work right now. So until he gets home, I'll read that. I have started listening to the audiobook of The Forgotten Seamstress. I'm probably about a third of the way into this, and I'm enjoying it. It's a little bit different. Um, it is about a seamstress in England, and she goes to work at the palace and has a relationship with Prince Edward, who ends up becoming king i don't remember now um but it was so basically queen elizabeth now her uncle the one that abdicated the throne that's the one that she ends up having having the relationship with so right now he's not king yet so it's like prince edward albert they call him albie i think was what his family called him uh but i need to look up what his name was when he was king he was king for a very short period of time and then he abdicated the throne to Elizabeth II's father. So anyway, it's interesting. It is a little confusing. It's told in two different story like timelines. Um, one is in 2008, and this woman found a quilt of her grandmother's that her grandmother really, really wanted her to have, and her friend notices that the material that it's made out of was only used at the palace and was only used by royalty and so it's really really important and so she's kind of digging into the story behind that and then the other storyline is in 1970 this lady that is in basically um not an insane asylum but basically a home for people who are mentally have mental issues somebody's doing an interview with her and it's the recordings from the cassette tapes of this interview and so it's this woman telling her story from back when she had this relationship so it's just kind of a different kind um way to tell a story i think but i'm enjoying it so far it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens as it goes on right now it's right now it's just a little simplistic for me but anyway that's what i'm listening to i'm gonna sit down and read redeeming love for a while and i'll check in with you guys later all right, guys, so it is now Sunday evening, February 16th, something like that. Anyway, a little bit of a reading update. I finished The Forgotten Seamstress on audiobook. Um, I ended up giving this one three stars. It was actually really interesting. Um, so this counted for the dual timeline challenge, and it is about a woman in the early 1900s who is a seamstress at Buckingham Palace and has an affair with the Prince of Wales, who his family called David. His name was David, but it was Edward, Prince of Wales. And he later, I think, becomes King King Edward, maybe? Um, but he is the king that abdicated his throne prior to, like, the current Queen Elizabeth's father taking the throne. So it was his older brother abdicated the throne, gave him the throne, now Elizabeth's queen, whatever. So this is the guy who abdicated the throne to be with Wallace Simpson. Um, but anyway, so she has an affair with him and kind of what the fallout is for that. And then the current day timeline takes place in 2008. And we're following this girl who has this quilt that has been passed down to her from her grandmother. And she shows it to her friend and her friend recognizes the fabric in it as being a May silk, which is a specific fabric that was unique to the royal family at the time. Um, Queen Mary, who was May before she was coronated, um, it was specific silks that were developed for her. So she, this quilt has those silks in it. So they're like, okay, how did the person who made the quilt get a hold of these royal fabrics? Yada, yada, yada. Anyway. It was interesting. Um, the storyline was fairly simplistic. I had figured the whole entire thing out by the end. Um, it kind of leaves off on a weird note. Um, I don't know if I quite like the ending of it, but it was still interesting. This is one that I completely picked up, had never heard of before, and I'm glad I picked it up. It was a fun read. I really enjoyed my time reading it, so I gave that one three stars. So I have been reading 
sporadically here and there whenever I can sit down and read um, Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. I am about, let's see, how far am I into this? 80 pages into it. So far, I'm enjoying it. Knowing what I know of the Bible story, I understand why some of the characters are acting the way that they are. However, as somebody who's reading it not from a Christian lens, the guy in this is kind of creepy. Um, he won't leave this woman alone, and I don't know. So this basically it follows the story of Hosea from the Bible. So the story of Hosea is basically God tells this prophet to marry a prostitute and he sticks with her and stays by her side and continues to be her husband throughout all of her kind of escapades. So I'm assuming that's kind of what's going to be happening in here. But anyway, the guy right now is pursuing the woman and it's kind of coming off as creepy. So anyway, I am kind of picking that up. I do think that I am going to switch to audiobook on this. I just think that the story, the way it's being told, I will better consume this on audiobook. So I'm going to switch to audiobook. And then I did a little bit of reassessing, let's say, my TBR and what's realistic for me. We have two weeks as of today left in this readathon, and most of the books that I'm going to read, I will probably read via audiobook. I'm looking at links of audiobook, links audiobooks, and the links of the books that I have that I still want to read, realizing I'm not going to get them all done. So I'm having to kind of revamp a little bit. Um, so the first substitution out that I'm going to make is I am going to, instead of reading A Gentleman in Moscow for my mail on the cover book, I am now going to switch to a middle grade book and read Bud Not Buddy. This is a Newbery Award winning book that I have been wanting to read for a while. Um, I also want to read this because I've been wanting to read Christopher, Christopher Paul Curtis and I had been eyeing possibly reading some of his books during Black History Month, so this works out perfectly. Um, this takes place in 1936 in Flint, Michigan, and other than that, I don't really know. I just know that it's 1936, so it would count as historical fiction, and it would be a great book to read during Black History Month, and it's a Newbery Award winning middle grade. So it should read fast, and it should be a great book. And I'm excited to read this. So I'm going to switch and start reading This Is My Physical Book and reading Redeeming Love as my audiobook. So that's kind of my game plan for that. I also have the ebook out from the library for this so I can read these back and forth. And then when I get done with this, I will switch over to, or I will start This Tenderland. So that's my game plan for right now. Um, also, fun and exciting, is I got some book mail. So I found, or it's book-ish mail. Um, I follow Bookshelf Tees on Instagram and I love her creations and just what she's doing. So she recently started selling stickers as well as t-shirts. I pre-ordered a t-shirt from her last like batch of releases and so I haven't gotten that yet but I did get my sticker that I ordered and so I thought I would show you guys what I got. Um, they come in these cute little, it's like a library um, envelope thing and her little receipt just is like a little library card anyway and so this is the sticker that I picked out it says take a look it's in a book anyway and my plan for this is actually to put it on my Yeti tumbler and it matches perfectly I didn't know it real realize that it matched this perfectly um, but look at that ah, it's just so cute so I'm gonna stick this on here and I will have my own little bookish tumbler I'm very excited um, so I just got to make sure that my family knows not to throw it in the dishwasher because, yeah, that's always a danger at my house is getting things that are not supposed to go in the dishwasher thrown into the dishwasher. So anyway, that's kind of my reading plans as of right now. So I have three books done, many more to go hopefully. I really, really want to crank out as many books as I can here in the last couple of weeks. I have almost all of my like non-historical fiction reading that I needed to get done this month has already been done. Um, so that's out of the way. And yeah, I can just really hunker down and focus on the rest of this over these next two weeks. So I will check in with you guys once I have a new update. And yeah, I will talk to you later. Hey guys, so it is now Wednesday, the 19th, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, but it is Wednesday. And I am still reading Redeeming Love. I am like almost three quarters of the way through this. 
I'm not loving it, to be honest. Um, I know this is one that so many people absolutely rave about, and I'm enjoying parts of it, but the main male protagonist in this just seems like super creepy to me, and I don't really enjoy reading about him, so yeah, I don't know. Hopefully I will get this knocked out today or tomorrow. It's a long book, and I'm listening to it. It's fine. I don't know. It will not be one of my favorite favorite books, unless the ending just like blows me away. We'll see. But so far, it's not my favorite. I am only about two and a half chapters into this. So I have not gotten a lot of reading done over the last couple of days. I, it's been chaos. My house. The kids had a long weekend over this past weekend. Kids have been sick. It's just I've had meetings going on for other things that I'm involved in. And I just haven't had a lot of time to read. So I have gotten some of Redeeming Love done though. I'm hoping to get that knocked out. And then we have another week left where I can hopefully get probably The Aviator's Wife, I think is what I'm going to go to next. Or either that or Molokai. One of those two will be what I pick up next. Um, and then, yeah, I still want to get to this Tenderland, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that done. So these are the two things I'm going to focus on for now. Um, today I am going to take my son to the library, uh, for story time. And I have a ton of books to take back to the library. I currently have 65 things checked out for my library. Um, for those of you who do not use your local libraries, I don't know why. Um, I have four kids. They are all in different reading levels. Well, my older two girls read similar things. But other than that, I have a kindergartner who's just learning how to read. I have a son who is reading board books and like very simple picture books sometimes. He still likes to rip pages, so we pretty much stick to board books. So my kindergartner is doing picture books and beginning reading. My older girls do their own chapter books. I read a ton. So we utilize our library a lot. I need to take back a lot of these books and then I have like 17 books waiting on the hold shelf for me because I put together my middle grade March TBR and a lot of my stuff is coming from the library and I'm doing a recommendations video for that as well which is probably already up now that I'm saying this. The recommendations video and the TBR are probably already up but I'm gonna go pick up all this stuff from the library today that is there. I'm still waiting on a couple I think aren't quite there yet. Um, and taking back as much stuff as I can that my kids are done with. So yeah, I will probably take you guys into the library with me a little bit. Um, and then I got to do grocery shopping and edit some videos today. So we'll see how much reading I get done today because yeah, my uploading has gone to pot over the last couple of weeks. I got my wrap up and my growing TBR videos up and then I just haven't gotten anything else up. I had filmed a side review, I had talked about this earlier, and I ended up having to scrap it at the last minute. And so I refilmed a bunch of stuff yesterday because that was the first chance I had where I didn't have kids running everywhere and tried to upload something last night and it froze. And now it's not uploaded, so I need to redo that. Life's just a mess. So it is what it is life goes on. I'm working on it. I have a bunch of videos that are going to be cranking out here in the last couple of weeks of the month. So hopefully that counterbalances me not uploading anything last week and the first half of this week. So anyway, that's my reading plans. That's where I'm at so far. Um, I will check in with you guys later. Hey guys, so it is Thursday, had to think about it for a minute, and I just wanted to update you because I just finished Redeeming Love. So that was to fill the prompt of reading a book set before 1900. Um, it's set in the 19 or 1850s in California during the gold rush. Um, I didn't like it. I think I'm going to end up giving it two stars. I just... It's an unpopular opinion. Almost everybody that reads it absolutely loves it. I'm not one of those people. 
I found the main male protagonist character, his name's Michael, I found him to be icky. Um, he was forceful, he was sometimes aggressive, um, he just, like, he, the whole story is, like I said, it's a retelling of the character of Hosea in the Bible, which is a guy who was a prophet, who was told by God to marry a prostitute, and he continued to pursue her, and he continued to love her, even though she continued to leave him and to return to her old ways, he would go and he would get her out of the brothels and bring her back home, and yada, 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 so this was a retelling of that, and I think the thing that bugged me about the way that it was portrayed is that the character of Michael he sees the prostitute character for the first time and he hears God telling him that you need to marry her. She's the one. And he basically from that point on is telling her like, you need to marry me. She ends up getting into a position where she's pretty much unconscious and he marries her when she's unconscious, even though she has told him repeatedly that she doesn't want anything to do with him. And then he takes her to live with him on his like remote farm and keeps her there and she tries to run away multiple times and he keeps going and getting her and bringing her back and it's just mm, I didn't like it by the end I liked her story and her story of transformation of her like being sold into prostitution and then learning how to be free from that and that she's worthy of love and all of that I really enjoyed that story the male character, though, I didn't like the way that it was told. And I honestly don't understand why it's such a popular book. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, still really haven't made a whole lot of progress in Bud Not Buddy. And I don't know what book I'm going to pick up next. I have, I'm looking over at my TBR stack. I have A Gentleman in Moscow, Molokai, Snowflower and the Secret Fan, and The Aviator's Wife. I think are the four that I could pick from to start. I may start Molokai. I may start A Gentleman in Moscow is the one that's on my 2020 TBR, but honestly, I really don't want to read it right now. So I think I might pick up Molokai, um, either that or The Aviator's Wife. I don't know. But um, I will probably do that later. I am currently listening to Harry Potter. Um, one of my 2020 goals is to read through Harry Potter again, and so I have never reread it. It's my first time rereading it, and I'm listening to the audiobook, and so I am most of the way through the first one, and I'm trying to, like, do four chapters a week, so I need to read my, or listen to my four chapters for this week, and I'm almost done with that. So once I get done with that, I'll probably pick up one of those two books on audio and then keep reading But Not Buddy physically. Um... I also still have this tender land to read physically, which I don't know if I'm going to get to or not. I have a lot of stuff going on that's keeping me busy and keeping me from physically reading things. Um, but I wouldn't mind getting another physical read under my belt for the month. So we'll see. That's kind of my plans. It's where I'm at. And I will check in with you when I have another update. Hey guys. So it is now Friday. Um, I had to think about it for a minute. Um, I kind of have a fun day planned today. I am, my, the library that is closest to me that I go to the most often is having their semi-annual library book sale. So I'm planning on going to that and then my neighbor and I are going to go to Ikea for the day and browse around and just shop and all the fun stuff. So we are actually going to the library sale together so I probably won't film much like while I'm there. But I will try to share with you when I get home some of the things that I get. Hopefully some good things. Um, but I thought I would update you. I decided to start Molokai on audiobook after I finished Redeeming Love. So I am reading Bud Not Buddy, listening to Molokai. And I, I started this book at the end of last year and got probably about a third of the way into it. And then had like readathons come up and I had to put it down and I never picked it back up. And so I am starting it over again from the beginning and I'm loving it just as much the second time around. Um, this is set in Hawaii in the 1800s, I think, like the late 1800s, turn of the century maybe. Um, but it is about a little girl who ends up getting leprosy and is sent to a leper colony in Hawaii. So anyway, 
that's what this is about. I'm going to be reading this and physically reading Bud Not Buddy for the mail on the cover. This is the location and the title. Um, so yeah, that's the game plan for today. I will probably check in with you guys when I get home and let you know what I get at the library sale. Hey guys, so it is now Monday morning. Um, it's been a while since I checked in, but that's because I didn't get a whole lot of reading done this weekend. Um, I went to the library book sale on Friday. I found a couple of things, which I'll include in my February book haul, but not a whole lot. I just got a couple of things. Um, and then my friend and I went to Ikea. I picked up a book cart, like what most people already have, um, and put that together on Friday. And that is where I'm going to be housing all my tripods because I have a couple of different tripods and like filming things and that sort of stuff um, but also all of my middle grade March books are going on the cart for now and then I will figure out what I want to keep on there in the future um, but last night I was able to finish but not buddy um, I was reading this for the prompt of a mail on the cover um, and this is set in 1930s in Flint, Michigan, and it is about a little, little orphan boy, Bud, who is trying to find his dad. And it was good. It's a Newbery Award winning book. It's not my favorite middle grade I've ever read, but it was good. I really liked the ending of it. I thought it was really, I thought the ending was really sweet. Um, and yeah, so another, uh, challenge or whatever, bingo square marked off because I got the mail on the cover now. Um, I am also still listening to, let me see if I can get this up, um, Molokai. I am like maybe a fifth of the way into it. Not very far, but I am loving listening to this. So I slowed down the speed just a little bit from where I was at. And I'm just soaking it in. I am planning on just taking all week to soak this in and appreciate this and not powering through it and just reading it and enjoying it. Um, I get in the habit a lot of times during readathons where I just power through as many books as I can and I'm not sitting in them and appreciating them and I really want to take time to appreciate this because I love the way it's written and I love the story that's being told. Um, so I am still working on this and this is for the location in the title challenge. Um, and then since I finished But Not Buddy, I decided I'm going to go ahead and pick up this Tenderland. I don't know if I'm going to finish this this week. Um, I don't read print books very quickly, um, so it just depends on how much time I'm going to have to actually sit down and read. Um, but I'm going to at least try to get part of the way through this. This is going to be for the challenge of a book that features ch a child character. Um, I've read other books this during this month that have featured children characters that I could double dip on, but this is the one that I wanted to read for this challenge, so I still want to try to get to it. It just depends, like I said, on how quickly it reads and if I'm going to have time to finish it. So that's kind of what my reading plans are for the week. Um, today I am going to be filming my plan with me, my bullet journal plan with me. Um, I have everything sketched out in it already, so which is what I typically do. I sketch everything out, and then when I'm filming, I'm just going over it in pen and coloring stuff in and that sort of thing. Anyway, that's has nothing to do with this. But I'm planning on filming that today, and that takes like typically an hour and a half to two hours for me to accomplish, depending on how detailed I get. So I will probably do that during nap time today. Um, and then I have another like bookish craft project I'm working on. I'm going to be making some bookmarks um, and I might film that just to put up as a time lapse video. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to do that today also or not. It just depends. But I think for now I'm going to get something to eat and read this Tenderland and maybe watch a couple of booktube videos. Um, and then I have a grocery order to go pick up later as well. So that's kind of the game plan for today. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, I'm going to be listening to Molokai, reading this Tenderland. I'm now at five books accomplished for the month for Historathon. I've read other books as well, um, but for Historathon. So I'm doing good. I'm happy with the progress I've made. If I can get these last two knocked out, I'll be super happy with that. Um, but yeah, I will check in with you guys when I've made some progress on these. Hey guys, so it is now Friday. February 28th 
and I kind of fell off the horse as far as vlogging goes. Um, this vlog has just turned into me talking solely about books and not about anything else going on in my life. Um, but that's okay. I just wanted to put this together so that you guys could kind of follow me throughout the month and see kind of how I read and how quickly I read and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, since I last spoke with you, I have finished two books. Um, I was able to finish Molokai. Um, I actually just finished it a little bit ago and I really, really enjoyed this story. This is a story of Rachel, who is a little eight-year-old girl who lives in Hawaii, and it is, starts in, 18, in the 1890s, um, and she ends up contracting leprosy. And back then, the Hawaiian natives did not have an, any immunity to a lot of outside diseases. Tourism and commerce had just kind of started picking up in Hawaii and they were starting to get a lot of insider or outsiders coming to the island and bringing with them a lot of diseases and one of those diseases was leprosy and so a lot of the native Hawaiians were contracting leprosy and they decided to start a leper colony and so as an eight-year-old little girl she is sent to live in this leper colony by herself I mean without family she wasn't by herself because there were the people that were taking care of them as well as other um, lepers there with them. And it's just the story of her life. You start in 1890s, it goes all the way through like 1950s. The afterward or whatever was in like 1970. Um, so it was very interesting because it goes through kind of the World War II time frame and how the like the bombing of Pearl Harbor and all of that, how that affected the leper colony and it was really really interesting this definitely would count for reading a book about a subject that i didn't know anything about because it was so informative as to what life was like on molokai which was the island that the leper colony was set up on um and just what these people went through how the fear of this disease that they didn't really know much about at the time really drove a lot of the actions of the government and that sort of thing. You also have a little bit of talk in here about the United States kind of taking over Hawaii and um, it becoming a territory of the United States, that sort of thing. Um, very, very good. Um, four to four and a half stars for sure. Um, it'll go in as a four star read on Goodreads for me. It was kind of a slow burn um, because it follows her throughout her entire life. It's just naturally a slow burn, but so interesting at the same time. So really, really, really enjoyed this one. And then I did not get to this Tenderland. I read like the prologue and maybe a chapter, which the chapters aren't very long. Um, and just decided that I wasn't going to be able to finish it by the end of the month. I have a major readathon going on in March as well, so I didn't want to carry it over into March. And so I just tabled it. I would rather take the time to read it when I can devote the time to it that it deserves. And so I just tabled it. And so I was looking for a book that would fit the um, challenge of reading a book with a child like involving a child and so I was at the library anyway picking up too many things again um, and I decided I would look through the graphic novels and see if there were any graphic novels that were historical fiction that involved children and I found one so I ended up picking up Gaijin, Gaijin? I think is how you pronounce the word um, and it's American Prisoner of War this is by Matt Faulkner and this is a graphic novel that has to do with Japanese internment camps during World War II in the United States. So it follows our main character who I do not remember what his name was now, Koji, Koji Miyamoto, um, and he is half Japanese. So his mother was American and his father was Japanese and after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, he is sent to a Japanese internment camp because he is half Japanese. And his mom, because she doesn't want to send him by himself, he's 13 years old, she decides to go with him and voluntarily. And it was interesting. It was not my favorite graphic novel by far. There was a 
lot of, or there were a lot of topics and themes in here that weren't fully flushed out. The ending didn't really follow the storyline. It was just a very abrupt and like a uh, quick ending to it. I don't know. It, it was definitely not my favorite. I ended up giving it only two stars because I just didn't really enjoy it that much. I was excited to learn more about the Japanese internment camps. It's something that I just find fascinating and troubling all at the same time. Um, but this just wasn't a good option. I am looking forward to picking up uh, They Called Us Enemy by George Takei. I hope that that one is better than this one. So we'll see. But I did fill the challenge because I read this and so that's another challenge marked off. And honestly the Japanese internment camps come up a little bit in this book because there's such a big um, Japanese population in Hawaii that it became an issue in this book too. And I feel like it was handled better in this book than it was in the book that was solely about that. So anyway. So those are all of the books that I read during Historathon. I am calling it here. Um, I'm not going to start anything. I'm not going to try to read a whole book in a day tomorrow or anything like that. So this is everything. I'm going to give myself a day off of reading tomorrow and then pick up with middle grade March on Sunday. I think that's right. Yeah, Sunday. Um, and I'm looking forward to that, but I think I just need a little bit of a break going into that. That's why I didn't pick up this Tenderland. So quickly to wrap up, I have all my books here. I was able to complete six books. Um, I completed, out of the nine challenges, I completed eight of them. Um, no, I did not complete six books. I completed seven books. I completed seven books and eight challenges because I was able to double dip on one of them. I did double dip on one of them. But everything else I was able to do with a single book. So... I used this Gaijin, which I, like I said, two stars. This was my uh, book with a child character. So there's that one. And then I have my location in the title, which ended up being four stars. Really, really enjoyed this. Highly recommend the audiobook was really good if you can find it. Um, my library has RB Digital, and that was where I was able to find the audiobook for this. But the narrator for it does the accents for everything so well. And there are so many Hawaiian words in here that I would never have pronounced the correct way. So I'm really glad that I did listen to this one on audio. It is a rather long audiobook, though, I will warn you. Um, I did Bud Not Buddy for the Mail on the Cover Challenge. I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. It was a fairly simplistic middle grade book, um, but I did enjoy that one. And then we have Redeeming Love. This filled the challenge of reading a book that was set before 1900. I did not care for this book. I actually have like neg fairly strong negative feelings about this book. I did give it two stars because I did enjoy reading from one of the characters' perspectives. I just didn't enjoy the other character. So, um, yeah, two stars, but filled the challenge. Um, I read The Forgotten Seamstress by Liz Trenow for the Dual Timeline Challenge. This one I ended up giving three stars. I enjoyed this one. I thought it was good. It just wasn't great. Um, but, yeah, I, I liked that one. And then I read... The Giver of Stars, I listened to an audiobook. I don't have it with me, um, and that was by Jojo Moyes, and that filled the challenge of reading a book about a time period or event that I was unfamiliar with, and that was the Pack Horse Library. I didn't really know a whole lot about that going into it, and so that filled that challenge, and I really enjoyed that book, I, and I gave it four stars because, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. And then the last book that I read was our group book, which is Fountains of Silence. And this counted for the group read. And then I'm also counting this one for a book that um, features a real historical person. And that would be Francisco Franco. And he actually makes an appearance in this book. And that's why I am counting it. And this also, this book just centers around his government and his opinions about things and all that. So anyway... That was the last book I read, and I gave this one four stars as well. So not too bad. I had, I think, what was it, three four-star reads? One, two, yeah, three four-star reads, two two-stars, and a three-star. 
So not too shabby. I'm pretty happy with that. And I was able to read some really, really great books. So I consider that a success. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed kind of seeing my month in reading as far as my historical fiction reading went. Um, if you participated in Historathon, I would love to hear, you know, what your experience was like. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this kind of vlog, if you will, and I hope that you stick around and subscribe, and until next time, see ya! Mm -hmm.